Welcome to But Jesus Drank Wine and other stories that kept us stuck. I'm Mead. And I'm Christy. In this podcast, we'll explore the stories that kept us, well, stuck, wanting to drink and not wanting to drink all at the same time. Join us as we show you that freedom from alcohol does not have to mean a life sentence of misery and missing out, but actually means living an authentic life full of peace, joy, and purpose. Hi. Do it louder. (laughs) Do it louder. Hello. We have some special guests for you guys, you ladies, today. (laughs) Yes, we We do. We have both of our boys today. We're really, really excited. I've got my son here, Carter, who's 11. And I've got my son. This is Mead, by the way. Um, (laughs) Since y'all, I know, have a hard time telling us apart when when we talk. But my son, Crawford, who is 13, say hello. Hello there. (laughs) <laughs> that was awesome. We are so excited because we have been talking about, I don't even think I told you this, but we've been talking about having you you guys on for a long time now because I think this is just going to be a really fun, no pressure conversation about like what your mom's quitting drinking, what this has been for you guys and what you have noticed. And just so everybody knows out there, like we did not prep, I did not prep Carter. I'm sure you didn't prep Carter offered either right like we did not prep these guys no i mean this started as just kind of a wouldn't it be fun to hear from not just us sit here and tell you what our kids say about what they remember from uh, when we were stuck in drinking cycle and what's different about that now but wouldn't it be really fun to hear straight from the kids and what they remember or maybe less about what they remember from the stuck in the drinking cycle days and more about, yeah, it's great about their moms not drinking now. No, I'm kidding. We've given them full permission to say, uh, well, at least the thing that I did say to Crawford, I, he's like, well, what do I say? What do I don't, what don't I say? I said, I want you to say anything that is honest. Just yeah. be honest. You too. Just be honest. And we're just going to have fun. Right. Yeah. You don't have to you don't have to worry about what you're going to say. Just be honest. We're going to talk about the maybe the five best things about your mom's not drinking anymore. What that yeah. what that looks like from yeah. your from your lens. Which by the way, I, I'm just going to say so I also have a 15-year-old daughter, you have a 13-year-old daughter. I also have a 9-year-old daughter. And the 9-year-old did she very much wanted to be on here for this too, but my 15-year-old oh, daughter yeah. had no interest uh, yeah. in doing this and yeah. I think was the same for you, right? Well, it was actually really interesting because I thought it was going to be the same for Ella. She'd be like, no way. But of course, as, as soon as Carter got the invitation, she's like, I want to be on the podcast. Why don't oh. I get to be on the podcast? I'm like, well, maybe we'll do an episode of the girls next. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So then we'll have the, the girls perspective too. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> well, we're starting with the boys. Let's have fun. What's one best thing, Carter, about your mom? Not drinking wine anymore. She's a lot happier. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> one. I am a lot happier. And I feel like this episode's definitely going to make me cry. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. I was going to say that was on, that was one of the first ones that Crawford said, too, she, that, I'm, that I'm a lot happier. And I wonder if either of y'all could share, like, what, is, what does that look like? What does that mean when you say that we're a lot happier? What does that look like in real life? You can totally be honest you know and say I was more grumpy before. I was more shouty before. You have a more positive mindset towards things. Oh, gosh. Look at that big language. I like it. More positive <laughs> mindset. With that so sweet cool. little British accent. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. What about you, buddy? What, what, can you, what can you say? What's the difference between what does happier look like now versus what it looked like before when I was stuck in the drinking cycle? Say it, whatever it is. I mean, well, you smile a lot more. Oh, yeah. I love Me that. Me too. Yeah, what else? You're more understanding about things. More understanding about things. That is true. I, would you say like, more, like, kind of goes along with more patience? More patience, definitely. Do I, do I still get fired up sometimes? Not as often. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> what I do you think about the fire over here? <laughs> you don't know. Does mom, does mom still get fired up at times, but maybe it's not as intense. Less, less. Yeah, yeah. You I have a teen now. He says you have a teen now. Yeah, it was yeah. A lot worse. There's a lot less fire coming your direction, though, right? Yeah. Same <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robert's like, yeah, I feel that over here. 
I, yeah. Um, so like in that umbrella of mom's happier now, Carter's is like mom has a more positive mindset and outlook towards things. And Robert's saying that, you know, I smile more and there's less less fire coming his way. I'm more understanding. <laughs> so it's interesting because I think that, you know, when we, Christy, when we make our list of the best things about being free from alcohol, we say things like patience. Like we have more patience now. And yeah. I, just, I just think it's really neat to see like what falls under that umbrella of happier or patience and what that looks like through the lens of the little people here. Yeah, it's so true. I was actually randomly looking this morning through like client testimonials and seeing like the trends and stuff. And that was definitely one of them with like any mom. It was always more patience, more time and better relationships with kids. And so it's just when you talk about not drinking, and I know we've said that this a thousand times, but it just not drinking has nothing to do with alcohol. It just has to do with gaining more patience and more clarity and a more positive mindset, just transforming your relationship with your family and your children. And it's just, these guys are on here to tell you all about it, right? <laughs> yeah, we always talk about that mental real estate that drinking takes, uh, that drinking occupies not just the time when we're drinking, but the tr- time that we're planning, prepping for, recovering from, and then the time that it makes us irritable and less patient and distracted it just occupies so much real estate. And so the difference is noticeable and being able to see it from these guys' lens is is awesome. So what else is on your list, Carter? What, what's tell, another tell, tell, thing? Tell, him what, tell me then, Crawford, what you said about the Funkos. Uh, that's what I want to hear about. <laughs> you want more money. <laughs> more money for Funkos. Yeah. <laughs> more money for Funkos. Okay, now tell me what Can Funkos you know, are. Yeah, tell tell everybody what a Funko is. They're like collectible figures. What do you collect? <laughs> collectible figures, what do you collect? And what, what are your favorite three Funkos that you've gotten this summer? My signed Spider-Man. Sp- science si- Spider-Man? Signed. Signed Spider-Man, yeah. And then, um, Wait, signed? Does that mean that yeah. Spider-Man himself signed it? And no, um, a comic artist did. Cool. Okay, carry on. Yeah. Set. What else? Groot. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. He's a tree okay. person from Marvel. Yeah. That's what, right? That's what Crawford just said. I thought he said Gru. I was going to Minions and just, you know, just oh. me. I was going Gru. But yeah. Oh, Groot. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Crawford, for translating that for me. And, okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He's got a lot. We definitely, definitely <laughs> have more money in this house for Bunkos now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's, that is a win. I, I will, I love that so, so much. <laughs> So what about you, Crawford? What's another best thing about me not ever having to drink wine again? Uh, more family time. Yeah. More family time. Yeah. So what did family time look like before when I was stuck in the drinking cycle? And what does it look like now? When she was drinking, like, it was all, like, at parties a lot every, like, Friday night. But now it's, like... Uh, family time, like family games, family, family dinner, and just spending time together. So yeah, it's been really that. nice. Love yeah. that. Say what you said before we hit record about the babysitters. Oh yeah, uh, no more babies. Well, not really more babysitters because, like, it was fun and all, but like, I sometimes missed having my parents. Yeah, so we had a lot more babysitters before when, when yeah. we were stuck. And and that's where it kind of like the web of we talk about it again, kind of like under this umbrella of like drinking and what does that look like? It's that web of when FOMO was loud and and we had these social invitations and we had a hard time. It's like it's crazy to me how. How literally so much is affected by drinking and yeah. and how FOMO is not a thing that I experience now at all. And yeah. yet it was something then that did keep me in that kind of like cycle of having sitters doing all the social things and then drinking too much at, in those occasions and not feeling great the next day and so on and so forth. So and y'all had fun with babysitters, but we had them a lot. We didn't have that carved out like intentional yeah. family time that that we do now. Yeah. Speaking of family time, we just got back from a week in Cornwall, which is down by the coast here in the UK, and we had such a good time. But 
even like now, three years on, I was like thinking about all the things that like would not have been possible if I was drinking on that trip, right? Because you have to get in the car and drive everywhere because everything's so spread out. And so it wouldn't have meant like half of the things that we did, we wouldn't have been able to do because we would have had Rosie at lunch and then the afternoon is shot, right? <laughs> do you remember those days? <laughs> yeah. And the, just the day like, where mom and dad would have to take a nap in the afternoon because you yeah. had the drinks at lunch and then kind of gearing back up for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. relate to that. Go ahead. But instead we played badminton. Ba- badminton. I can't say it. Badminton. Oh, say that's so cute, it. Christy. Badminton. 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 <laughs> Love badminton. that. In the in the in the garden, we set it up. We had we bought a set during COVID, so we brought it with us and we I was like doing that at like six o'clock in the uh, in the evening. Well, I know. And I was like, look at me go. <laughs> I promise I'm not 105. I'm only 40. But yes. <laughs> I know. Well, that's how I feel with pickleball. Saturday night playing pickleball at six o'clock in the driveway. I mean, who would have ever thought that that would be our Saturday night? Uh, there's never. A, yeah. When I was circling the drinking cycle, I would. It just wasn't available as an option. I, I don't yeah. know for for a lot of different reasons. So I get that the family time and the vacations and the yeah. And I think I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the boys would say or Crawford would say that this is a good thing or not. But I also feel like when I was stuck in the drinking cycle, we couldn't wait till we got to that family vacation because we knew that we would get that intentional ish. I mean, like at least we get yeah. a chance at intentional family time. And so we yeah. were desperate for getaways and and places to kind of carve that out when really the whole time we were able to do it here. It's just we were, you know, we just didn't – yeah. Yeah. We were stuck in that cycle. And so now that it's easier to be more intentional and carve it out, like we can have that family time here and then we're not as desperate for having to get away. Don't get me wrong. We still like to get away. But, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Carter, like, say the one – away. <laughs> say the one that you said about daddy. Um, you influence dad to drink less because, mm. like, you stopping drinking also makes dad drink less. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I don't know why is that good. Because I get more time with both my parents. Oh, I love that. Mm. Yeah, you get more time with both of us, and him and his dad are like best, best, best buddies. Like best buddies. Like when we were in California this summer, we Chris couldn't come with us this year, and there was a lot of Taylor Swift going on, and there was a lot of Barbie going on, and this guy could not wait to get back to dad. <laughs> I love that you say that because that is something that uh, Crawford had just written down as his five whatever beforehand too. Like, say what you said about it. <laughs> Here I am, like, let's hear from the boys. <laughs> no, you're gonna hear me with her son sitting next to her, and she's gonna do all the talking, Go ahead, buddy. What, I said. what you said about also similarly, like Carter said, that me not drinking, how does that influence dad? Yeah, well, my dad doesn't drink really anymore. He also has more time for me. We can throw the baseball more or do things outside together more. And it's just like really nice. Yeah, I love that. There's a difference. As I was not drinking anymore and maybe you started noticing and then – do you remember when that kind of like shift happened when dad was starting to drink less or is it just something that you just know now? Well, like y'all would always like sleep in until like 12 when drinking at parties. I would have to wait to go do stuff because I would used to wake up early and like I didn't like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> y'all had to get up and which is funny because now we get up early and you sleep late and we're like, Let's get up and hang out with us, please. Wake up. Funny how, how that changes. How late do you sleep in, Crawford? Uh, well, school really messed me up. But in the summer, <laughs> I slept till like 10 almost every day. I mean, they say that the teenage brains like are desperate for that sleep. There are certain like countries that are like petitioning for later start times of schools because of the way that like the preteen and teen brain is like needs that rest. Like you guys need that sleep. Well, it's funny you say that because and I don't know if this is true or not. So y'all can fact check me later. But when I was in pharmaceutical cells, I sold a, a sleep product. They talk about like how melatonin increases in the teen years. Like you have the most amount of melatonin naturally released in your body in your teen years, which is why 
partly they need that sleep and why they can sleep, you know, no matter what, what time of day. But remember, <laughs> remember um, your cousin, Will, when he was sound asleep on the sofa when we went to the beach that year. And it was like everything is happening in the house around us. It was like in, yes. like three o'clock in the afternoon. And he is, he is 16 or 17. And he was just passed out on the sofa in the middle of all of this like, yeah, kids need their sleep. Anyway. Do you guys so have else? anything else? Have um, there been anything that's come oh, to yeah. your like mind? You have more time to do stuff because like before it was you either you like wake up so late as you said, and um that means like me and Ella would just be awake, yeah, staying downstairs, yeah. But like now you're up for me, yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like the same thing in your house, too, that y'all would get up. And listen, like, no judgment for any of the listeners out there. If you are a parent who is sleeping in and your kids are getting yeah. up early, like, there is there is nothing wrong with that. Who am I to say there's something wrong with that? I know that naturally, the better I feel in the morning, having not had anything to drink, you know, before, allows me the more energy and the more just wanting to get up early. And that is something that's great. But certainly there are times now too where, I mean, maybe a nap in the afternoon is still something I will do. And not because I've been drinking, but there's nothing because I'm getting old. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great because I'm getting older. It's so true though, Crawford. We are, we're getting really old. <laughs> we are getting old. Uh-huh. It sounds like y'all can relate on that. Yeah. And no judgment. Didn't you have another one, buddy? Oh, yeah. So I feel my mom is more spiritual now. And like, oh, we more go to church every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you originally wrote down. It was, but we had a good laugh over it. Well, we now go to church like every Sunday instead of like them sleeping in. Instead of going to church, we go to church and it's also helped grow my relationship with God. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. So even though. Like then we would go to church regularly. For sure, there were times that we didn't feel great or we stayed out later than we wanted to stay out or we drank way too much, you know, and and we didn't go to church. And so so maybe the day before we said to the kids, like, we're going to church tomorrow. And then all of a sudden we're sleeping in and, you know, there's a there's an element probably of the, for the kids of, like, okay, this isn't so bad, but it definitely was something that was a huge conflict for me eventually the you know the tension that I felt around that but then also it became there were times that we went to church anyway because I was like okay it was almost like to compensate for the fact that I drank too much the, the night before and so we're gonna go to church and we'd go to church but I would be irritable I'd be you know fussing at them the whole way there and you know all the things that kind of like play into that and I would also be spinning the story that I spun so often was it's okay because you know but Jesus drank wine. Jesus drank yeah. wine. So it's fine. And so it's like I was going through. So when we did go to church, I was going, I guess you could say, like just through the motions and maybe in a compensatory kind of way versus um, actually like bringing my struggle to God and saying like, you know, what? this isn't this isn't aligning with what I value and I need your help, which I eventually did. But creating that path to now we just we go because we go and we love it and i love what you said and youth group what about youth group well now you're a youth group leader and your group really loves you Aww. and like if you were still drinking i think that you wouldn't do that because you'd rather spend your sunday night drinking out on the back porch or something instead of hanging out with like me and the rest of the kids at church i love that yeah. That's it's so great it's so true. I love spending my Sunday nights with those kids. And it's not something I ever in a million years would have imagined as being. I mean, in fact, when Holland was, you know, going to my oldest daughter, when she had started going to youth group and I was still stuck in the drinking cycle, there were times that I kind of wanted her not to go so that it wouldn't cut into my Sunday fun day for a drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, knowing that I had to drive her there. And so you're right. It much less going and like actually being with other kids and, and leading them. And yeah, so it definitely yeah. has changed. Um, what did you say that I'm more holy, <laughs> which he meant I'm not more holy, more spiritual. <laughs> like you said, 
I, I think ever... you're a lot more holy, Mead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I love it. I love uh, it. So it's it's definitely it's definitely different. Oh my gosh, you just reminded me literally just now of um, Ella had something at church where she had to be there several consecutive Sundays, and she was supposed to go with a parent. But instead of going with a parent, we literally would just drop her, come back to my house with the other moms, drink the wine, and then go back and like oh, pretend that nobody yeah. noticed that we were not there. Yeah. And now I'm just like, that was so stupid. <laughs> yeah. We have a be- much better church track record, right? Now that mommy's not getting buzzed every night. Yeah. Much well- better. When did Sunday fun day become a thing, too? Like, let's... I I don't know, because it's the worst possible thing that you could do to set yourself up for Monday morning. Like, whether you're working or not, like, whether you've got... You're a stay-at-home mom or you're going to the office, it just spikes your adrenaline and cortisol and you can't sleep and it's a total mess. (laughs) And, yeah, and if you have been kind of, you know, letting your hair down over the weekend, like I certainly did, I mean, just continuing that dumpster fire, like, really... To, yeah. to start off the week, just, oh my gosh. I, yeah, yeah. When did it become a thing? When did Sunday Fun Day become a thing? Or I should say, when did it become a thing that now we get to make it into mean, meaning something else? And yeah. Sunday Fun Day now actually does. It is fun. It's just fun in a, in a way that I never thought was possible. We, we spend a lot of time at church on Sundays, and but that, that's fun. Yeah, it's different yeah. than before. I also really enjoy walking him to school. Like I before, it was such a chore, and now it's I. We get to chat, and thankfully, yes. we're, we're we get. You used to drive, even though it's two. Minutes. I used to drive, yep. even yep. Mm-hmm. It was a two minute walk, and it's a, two. Drives. It's not a two minute walk. It's like maybe like a ten Three minute minutes. walk. <laughs> <laughs> Carter, tell and, us but the when, truth, no, buddy. but you tell, tell us. us to go ahead. But when I was hungover, yeah, I would drive it. I would literally mm-hmm. drive it. And I would yeah. literally like throw him out the car in like yeah. go like as I was driving past. Like, Grab your backpack and get out. Yeah. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know, you bring you bring that up, and that's so true. That's something that I have noticed too, is that driving them to school is something I get to do and not something I have yeah. to do. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked a lot about that kind of mindset, these these things that we get to do now, and a lot plays into that. But but sorry, carver has got a little cold work in here. Um, That's okay. But it's the it's the same kind of thing. Like, and as yeah. someone who's getting ready to have a child who's going to have a driver's license and be able to drive, and this is the one thing that I hear from parents who are ahead of ahead of us in this way. They're like, "Yeah, you'll be you'll be really excited when your kid can drive themselves because it does you know free up some time in your day, but you're also really going to miss it because that time that you have together." Yeah. So a two minute drive or a ten minute walk that's eight extra minutes you guys get together versus yeah. when you were driving when you were hungover. And for us, it's it's the same thing. It's like I just – it was like it used to be just survival. I have to get them to school. And so it's like, oh, I could just get them there. And then – but now it's – that's some really precious time. Yeah. And, and it, it totally goes – think so or not. I was going to say, whether they think so or not, because I'm like, put your phones in the center, in the middle console, just fold those up, and we are going to (laughs) talk. So whether they think that it's precious or not, it's precious to me. Yeah. I was just going to say it's the exact same for like all the after school activities, driving them at any time, right? Especially if you get to have one of them one-on-one now. Like, I love that so much because I feel like, especially like, you know, they're both the, the second, right? So yeah. It's the it's I think that when the older ones are around, at least in this house, like this this poor guy barely gets a word in edgewise, you know what I mean? And yeah. so when it's just the two of us in the car, I feel like it's our it's our time to like really, really talk. Do you he think doesn't have a lot of time just to do it in the car? We haven't because you haven't like there hasn't been as many activities, but like when we do get that time, like I remember we like were driving Ella went to camp. Yeah, when Ella went to camp. But I remember like we had just dropped off Ella at something. And you were sitting in the front seat and it was the first time you were like, mom, I'm really nervous for camp. And it was like, we we only get those special, I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of that special you and me time when we're in the car together. Mm-hmm. You think so too? Yeah. yeah I also remember when his dad drinks less now. Because um, he didn't have his driver's license. He would always walk me. 
when you didn't. But it was more of he had to because he had to get the work on the way anyway. Yeah. And now our conversations are actually less. Yeah. I love that. Uh, that's so beautiful. I love that so much, Carter. Oh, so good. Oh, look at these boys. Do you guys do you guys know what it, what Tidy Tina is? You don't? I thought we I thought we you overheard me and dad talk about it. Dude. We just say it all the time. We just say it all the time. I just say the name. <laughs> Carver, do you know what Tiny Tina is? Dude. Who is she? Tiny new action. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as as soon as they hear anything that resembles coaching, they like put their oh fingers oh in. yeah oh yeah I put got that from Ella this week. Did you, you stop coaching me right now? You stop coaching me. I'm like I'm not trying to coach you. I promise. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so it's so hard. I'm like oh oh yeah you're right. Okay, no no coaching talk. Okay. <laughs> I think it was like something along the lines of like no honestly like I promise like it doesn't really matter what those other girls think and she's like you stop it right now you stop coaching you, st- <laughs> you stop that mom you are not be coaching me right now I did not hire you that's we do talk about that like I did not hire you to be a coach right now so <laughs> oh my gosh that's yeah so tiny new action something that like okay so boys you know we have we have moms out there listening. We have dads out there listening. We have people out there listening that are feeling like they want to be spending more time with their children, like you boys are talking about that is available to you now that your moms don't drink. They want that for themselves. And, you know, they want that for their kids. They're listening to what you're saying and just really it's hitting home with them. Like, what is something that you would say to encourage them? What would you say to like your, a, a friend's mom who was thinking about not drinking anymore? I would say talk to my mom. <laughs> talk to my mom. <laughs> talk to my mom. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but uh, probably like it just means you have more time to live your life. You have more time to live your life. Yeah. And, I love that. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, fermented grape juice is bad. Fermented grape juice is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. That was awesome. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. I love Nailed it. it. Oh, so good. What about you, buddy? What would you say? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. That's all right. I mean, it's just better having a mom who's always there, and like dad who's always there, besides for whenever they're at work, but usually when they're working, it's when I'm at school, and that time is either spent with friends or family, and before my parents stopped drinking, I didn't have that much family time. It was mainly only friends, but now we have a lot more family time. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, that. we have the carbon out. We're getting ready to go have family lunch right now. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Is there one thing that you would like to say to any of the moms who have sons who mm. like comics and Marvel? Go ahead. Here's your moment. <laughs> He's been wanting to say it. Come on. Do it. Do it. Subscribe to Carter's Comic Corner. Subscribe to Carter's Comic Corner, guys. He has an amazing YouTube channel and an Instagram. Oh, and he's leaving. <laughs> I love it. My, drop the mic. He's he is literally leaving. <laughs> what's his um? What's his handle? Is that what Carter's it's called? Carter's Comic Corner. Oh, <laughs> look at me. I'm trying to like say like social media things. But I don't even know anything about. Oh, this is your moment. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> We have lost the 11 year old. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Carter. You're amazing. We All right, love Crawford. you. Crawford, what about you, buddy? Any any last thing that you want to leave with our, our listeners? Go Braves and go God. Woo! Yes. I love it. Yes. So All fun. Right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. This was so fun. This is amazing. Thanks, y'all, for, for listening. We'll see you next Monday. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. You can find all of our episodes at butjesusdrankwine.com and make sure you follow us over on the gram at Love Life Sober with Christy and Mead at I'm Not Sober, I'm Free underscore. To learn more about what we do, you can visit our websites at meadhollandshirley.com and lovelifesober.com. Take a screenshot of this podcast and share it with a friend or two. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't have to worry about missing a single episode. And if you love what we're doing, please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify. 
This helps more women who are feeling stuck and alone in the overdrinking cycle to find hope and encouragement. Thanks, ladies. We so appreciate you. We'll see you next week.